So hello everyone, this is Byron King with Investor Intel. And today we are going to interview uh, representatives of a company called Lomiko, L-O-M-I-K-O, which is a lithium and graphite company working in Quebec. Uh, I'll, I'll offer Belinda Labatt the chance to uh, just give a quick introduction to the company. Well, maybe I'll, I'll give that introduction. <clears throat> and uh, Gordana is here, Chief Operating Officer, myself, CEO and Director. We have a third member of our team, Vince Osborne, who's CFO. We all came in just over a year ago to build a meaningful operator of choice, starting in Quebec, exploring and developing for graphite and lithium. And we have a project that is at the PEA stage that's now about 50% of the way into the PFS stage fantastic deposit in southern Quebec where we have mineral rights inside of um, the Grenville Graphite Belt, which sits inside Kittigan Zibi traditional territory. And in the north, we have a lithium project that we're earning our way into. It's a very large package or claim that is of over 100 square kilometers in size. And that is what we are looking to do, uh, where we are looking to develop or explore for lithium anomalies. We have cesium tantalum that's also been found in early soil sampling. And we'll be continuing to do that work and really creating um, a strategic position on the north end of the Namaska lithium belt. Well, thank, thank you, Belinda. Uh, I wanna turn uh, to uh, Gordana, Gordana Slepchev, who is your, uh, who's your, who's one of your technical uh, experts uh, in the metallurgical uh, arena, uh, Gordana, um, a lot of people might know graphite as this sort of, you know, the, the graphite pencil or you put it in a lock to undo the lock, but uh, it's, uh, it, it's true that not the, most of what is in a modern battery is not lithium, nickel, cobalt. Most of what's in a modern battery is graphite. Isn't that, isn't that where we're coming from here? Yes. Uh, thank you, Baron. I just want to correct. I'm a mining engineer, but I uh, get that um, you know, pleasure to learn a lot about the batteries and composition. But yeah, you're correct. 95% uh, of the anode, which is negative electrode, is composed of the graphite. So there are many industrial traditional uses for graphite, including, uh, I believe, first one as lubricants. It, it is due to its uh, properties where uh, the graphite has really strong ties along the planar view, but between the planes, it is really easy to separate. That's what actually helps with uh, lubrication. And some other, um, you know, uses like nuclear, chemical, steel making, but really upcoming uh, areas of the use, it is into batteries, uh, lithium ion batteries, rechargeable batteries that we use nowadays for our cell phones, computers, of course, electric vehicles, and also for energy storage. Now, uh, Belinda, before we came on air here, we were talking, uh, you mentioned that there is about to be a global shortage of graphite. Uh, it's not one of those things that people think in terms of shortages. People think of, oh, there's not enough oil. Oh, there's not enough you know, gold. There's not enough copper. What, what's this story about the shortage of graphite? Where's that coming from, Belinda? That's correct. So in the, if you look at the last 10 years, the market has been at a, a equilibrium, I would say. So producing globally, there's just about over a million tons per year of, of graphite that is produced to serve these markets that Gordana has been referring to. And you know, as a heat retardant, traditional industries, uh, lubrication, all of that. But it is the anode that is creating the supply shortage. And because the growth of the EV market, the penetration rates in Canada, at least, are still, you know, sub 10 percent, call it about 7 percent heavy industrial vehicles, 1 percent are EV. All of that is going to change because if you look at Canada, for example, all cars that will be sold in Canada by 2035 will be electric. All of them will need graphite. So you're seeing a, a massive dislocation of the, a very important mineral. It's not fuel, it's not um, you know, petroleum, it is graphite. So that's where that shortage is coming from. The anticipated um, demand for this material or supply shortage rather is 8 million tons by 2040. And that's where you get the eight times multiple. Now, traditionally, much of the world's graphite has been processed in China for the last 30 years, kind of like everything, everything comes from China. Uh, so uh, 
do you, does does Lamico have a plan to produce and, and process, not just dig it out of the ground, but I mean, actually process the material into uh, saleable graphite that you could sell to the car companies, the battery companies, what have you? Uh, Gordana, uh, Gordana. You know, what's your mining engineer view of this? Yeah, I think uh, nowadays uh, with the majority of the demand going into the, of course, anode and the battery production, one who is developing the graphite mining would have to think about developing anode uh, facility. It may be Lomico uh, alone, but we may join forces with some other groups to do that transformational facility. Something for uh, you know majority of the folks to understand, uh, there any plant would actually have flotation plant, which is the first plant to upgrade the graphite and minimize material movement. So, because at the end of the day, the majority of the cost comes from haulage and mining. So Lomico intends really to build the flotation plant uh, close to its mine site, uh, where it would produce a graphite that is plus 94% carbon. So anything that comes out from these uh, graphite mines and flotation plants has to meet that minimum of plus 94 to be uh, you know, selected to go into further process if, if it goes into the anode production. For anode production, you really need very pure material, over 99.95% purity or even higher. We have done some work uh, earlier this year, and we have proven that actually our material could be purified for over 99.95% carbon. And the impurities, which are really important for the manufacturer, are really low. We are also now finishing the metallurgical testing with SGS. And uh, as I was showing just before, we have some of the examples of the flakes. Uh, they look really awesome. And we are sending materials now to do micronization, spheronization, and later purification studies for our uh, battery uh, anode materials or bands. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll show my visual aid here. This is a piece of anthracite coal uh, from Redding, Pennsylvania, over in the eastern part of Pennsylvania, uh, in the, the Appalachian Mountains. Now, if I continue geologically north to a higher grade of metamorphism, I get up into Quebec. And this anthracite coal, not this particular, but anthracite coal like that, has been highly metamorphosed into your graphite. And, and yeah, so, so here's, here's this graphite. Now, now people think of coal or people think of graphite as perhaps a commodity material. How much is, it, how much is a ton of this stuff worth? Uh, uh, Belinda, what's, what's, your, what, 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 what's the price point and what, you know, where's the profit in, in this kind of flaky little graphite stuff here? But I mean, what's interesting about graphite is it depends on the size of those flakes. I don't know what you're holding. <laughs> But no, if it, it's, it, it'll be hard the, for the, the fines are more valuable than the large flakes, and it's mm -hmm. it's really what the fines are what are going to be used uh, at a very specific flake size for the anode, and those are about nine hundred dollars a ton, up to a thousand dollars, and then the entire product spectrum you can see you know fifteen hundred dollars a ton. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. know what flake size that is. Gordana, are you going to guess? Well, it's oh. kind of hard to see. It seems yeah. like something fine, or maybe around minus a hundred the mesh. Yeah, this this is this is fairly fine. This is fairly fine material. But okay, you know, we could talk about this all day, but we we you know, the, the the viewers have their attention span. The point is that you have a company called Lamico, L O M I K O. It trades on the TSX Venture, and it trades on the US OTC under a ticker, and uh, you have a website. And you have a presentation and a fact sheet where people can go to find out more. Uh, and if they want, they can contact the company. Uh, but it's it's Lomico, L-O-M-I-K-O, an up and coming graphite play uh, working in Quebec, which is in North America, which is part of the trade agreement so that uh, they can basically, you know, feed material into the U.S. auto industry, battery industry and everything else. Belinda, Gordana, thank you for your time. And we wish you well. You're Thanks, welcome. Bye. Thank you.